Hello everybody, welcome back. I did get that new residential refrigerator put in my RV and I found out pretty quickly that I am gonna need a solar upgrade. Let's go, uh, let's go have a look at this. All right, let's go up here for just a minute. And uh, just for reference, what we have going on here is, and we'll have to come back up here. We gotta go back down and then come back up. But just for reference, I did put 400 watts of solar up here. And then I decided to uh, put 400 more. So right now we have 800 watts of solar on the coachman. And uh, Bella's down there somewhere. Uh, let's go back down for a minute. Oh yeah, and the van has 400 watts of solar on it too. So uh, I might end up uh, borrowing something out of the van uh, we'll see what I get figured out here. I'm I'm coming, Bella. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Hello, hello, girl. We'll get her figured out, right? We'll get it figured out. Let's go. And there it is. It was it actually ended up being a little bit taller than I thought. I thought it was only going to be I don't know what I was looking at about two inches taller than the uh, uh, the old. Uh, propane uh, type refrigerator uh, and uh, actually ended up being about four I don't know four or five inches taller so it still fit it was a close call I had to remove this light fixture that um, had, a, had some problem it didn't work anyway uh, so it's it was that close there's only about an inch and a half here and that light stuck down actually I don't know I'll have to I'll check that out maybe I can put it back up just to cover that nastiness but all right, yeah, so it's, uh, we're in pretty good shape here. It's, uh, semi, semi-stock. And, uh, it's, it's, it's working good. It was, it was a, just a really nice fit. It, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. The question quickly became, just how much power am I going to need? You know, how much power does this thing actually use? uh just even even in rough numbers uh, try to overestimate it's always better to have a little extra power than always struggling and not having enough and have to worry about things thawing out right so i i, I need to get a, a ballpark figure of of how much this uses so i used one of these power uh banks uh because it shows how many watts it draws and i can run it for an extended period and because this you know as it cycles on and off as it needs cooled and then it shuts off and then after a while it kicks back on again you know how they cycle uh so i run it for a stretch of hours and kind of seeing it got a feel for how much it would use like say overnight or in a 24-hour period so i did a little test run with it at its default settings out of the box installed it all secured um plugged in and uh Getting, getting it down to temperature probably a good full 24 hours make sure it's all nice and cool throughout uh and i was shocked by how much power it really used i, I it was a, a little bit alarming i'm thinking wow i don't know how i'm going to come up with that much power well here the default settings were it was keeping it way cooler than it needed to be and we'll get back to the power station how i figured how i adjusted that so i decided to google you know what is the ideal refrigerator temperature and the answer was 40 degrees okay what's the ideal free freezer temperature uh that was zero degrees although i'll bet most uh freezers are not kept that cold because people say oh the ice cream's too hard that it's too cold back it off they, people adjust their freezers according to how hard their ice cream is uh in many cases right uh so and i know from personal experience at zero or the low single digits and zero ice cream is spoon bending hard so if you've backed off if you back it off to where your ice cream soften ups you're probably uh up into the teens or low 20s or something so you're probably not running your freezer as cold as what it's recommended to be that's according to usda proper food storage so with that information i do have one of these that uh tells me uh the upper one is uh the freezer is uh, uh that's the freezer and that's the refrigerator now i'm not going to quite keep it down to zero i'm happy with or over here these little numbers right now it operates in a range of a high of 19 and a low of 11. i might bump that down a little bit 
but I'm, I'm pretty okay with that being uh, being that cold. Okay, the fridge is supposed to be at 40 degrees. It operates in a range from 36 to 44. That split that, right now it's adjusted, it split that perfectly. 40 is the middle. So I'm not gonna touch that, I'm happy with that. So by default, the freezer was actually getting as low as negative two and up to about eight. <laughs> and it didn't need to be that cold. Maybe but according to the USDA, that's ideal or closer to ideal, but I don't need it to be quite that cold. Um, and the, the refrigerator was the uh, worst one. It was, I got up the other morning and it was down to 28 in the refrigerator. I'm thinking, man, stuff's gonna start freezing. I definitely wanted to back that off for, before things began freezing. And it only was a high of 30, uh, 36. And low, I mean, that refrigerator does not need to be that cold, so I backed that off, and um, you know, I had to give it some hours to, to kind of get back up to temperature after being that cold, and I reset, so, you know, I reset that to zero uh, to get a fresh, uh, a fresh range of what it was now operating at, and that's now this is what I have. So with the refrigerator set like that, I was shocked on how much power it was using. I'm thinking that's just not gonna, that's just not gonna uh, work. <laughs> Uh, when I adjusted the refrigerator, when I backed that off, it used, uh, I was surprised how little, uh, it really made a, a big difference. So that's when I figured out, okay, it only uses uh, whatever it was, uh, 200 watt hours over eight hours. And that settled that power usage way, way down. So what I did here was, now I've recharged it up again, because uh, my experimenting uh, with the refrigerator is complete. The So I went from 100%, I ran it for eight hours, and I think it used about 20% of the, uh, of, this is a thousand watts, uh, a thousand watt hours. And so it used, in eight hours, it used 200 watts. Now it runs, when it runs, it, there's a display it tells you. Here, let me, let me show you something. Oops, 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 bang. We'll plug my crock pot in here, okay? And uh, I don't think this is turned on. Uh, let's, turn, let's turn this off for a minute. Okay, the AC is on now, and uh, let me turn my crock pot on. Okay, there, it's it's on. It's just a little crock pot. Uh, it doesn't use a whole lot of power. Oh, and this was nice to find out too. Actually, any of these appliances, uh, what I found out was, see, that's surprising. My crock pot only uses, on high, only uses 81 watts. Who knew? I could run, I could run this crock pot a thousand watts I could run this crock pot for over 10 hours All right 10 hours would be 800 watts another thing that I found out with that was you know I bought this microwave it was rated at 700 watts well that's 700 watts of output of cooking power it actually consumes it actually pulls a thousand watts so it was just good information to have when I'm trying to calculate uh, you know my battery usage my solar needs and such Okay, I guess I can turn this back off. The, um, it's still using 81 watts. That, that's surprisingly uh, low. So there, for reference, anybody who wants to use a crock pot on their a battery or solar system, they really don't use as much as you think. But that's steady power. That's not, that's not mine's not on a thermostat anyway that kicks on and off as it needs it. It's a you know continuous uh, 81 watts. Okay, so that's going back down to zero. And, uh, and and I know the toaster oven, I know that uses a full thousand, that pulls a good uh, thousand watts also. Uh, and this thing came in really handy. We'll, uh, we'll get back up, we need to get back up in, on the roof here in a minute. Uh, this is like the, this is a competitor of Jackery by the way. This is EBL power stations. Uh, yeah, it's the 1000 watt EBL. And this thing is incredibly handy. Wait, let me move this. I, I, I love this thing. I have it. I mean, I have its equivalent. I have the thousand watt Jackery. I've had it for about a year. And it turns out I've, I've had this one since, I've had this since April. And uh, I, I was supposed to do a review on it. EBL's kind of been getting upset with me and impatient because I'm just now getting around to doing this. Uh, yeah, I've had it since April. So I've had plenty of chance to use this. And I, I really, really like it. Uh, I, and obviously it's out here. And I mean, I'm using it more than I am the Jackery. I'd have to go. I might go dig the jackery out. It's kind of dusty and fr from not using it. Now check out the price difference in these. We'll go to the jackery page and there it is, the jackery. This is the model I have. Uh, it happens to be about four pounds heavier 
it is bulk uh, bulkier and uh, but you know it's priced at uh, $999 now they do have Jackery does have the code for $149 off so what's that make it $850 all right now check this out let's go to the uh, EBL website they have it marked down from $999 down to $659 plus that's a pretty huge difference uh, keep in mind it's done everything this has done everything that the uh, the, Jack the Jackery has um, it's marked down to 659 but now don't be fooled by this part here the uh, take an additional 80% off with the code Voyager do not use that code that's up for only $80 off if you use there's another code let me go to the shopping my shopping cart I already have one of these like in checkout here it is okay let's check out yeah mark down to 659 let's go to uh, checkout okay now now I put both codes in here I did use the Voyager code uh, by mistake I'm like oh oops they they emailed me this other code this EBL code one that's the code you want to use and I'll put it down in the description with that code and you click apply it's twice it's calculating calculating okay that was good up here it says EBL um, code uh, 160 so that's twice as much off that brings it down to 499 it was regularly 999 that's five hundred dollars off this is half price with that code and what's the jackery with its code 850 what is that a 350 uh, 351 dollars cheaper than the jackery and uh it performs just as well thousand watts you know and this is a more compact design you know the the jackery is so much longer and round you know rounded ends that big uh handle on the top it's just a big bulky uh thing i just like this it's more compact uh, and it does it just does everything all the typical stuff uh, you know the inputs for charging and the, the other uh um uh, whatever anderson uh connector you know it's charging uh, ports and of course the 110 and uh, the quick charge USBs, you know, the 12 volt stuff, you know, all the, all the usual stuff these have. So, uh, and an emergency light, or is it uh, a, reg a regular light, or there is an emergency uh, emergency mode, uh, it blinks the SOS stuff. And what the Jackery doesn't have is this cordless charger. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Well, I don't have any cordless devices, so um, that doesn't particularly matter to me. But uh, yeah, and, and the top is flat. You can, you can put stuff on it. You know, you can't do that in a Jackery. So it just takes up more, uh, I mean, less space. Yeah, the Jackery just, it, it's just bulky. And, um, you know, something else I use this for too is when I was putting that, this refrigerator in. So I had to cut that hole, this hole bigger. And yes, I, so I got my jigsaw. And yeah, I could have uh, got the extension cord out. and uh, But this was right here. So I just grabbed it. And um, with the old one out, of course, there's that floor in there. I just set it down. There's the opening in the back, the ventilation to the outside. I put a 20 inch box fan in there to draw the air out because I'm in here cleaning cobwebs and uh, you know some old insulation and you know I didn't want that or you know floating around in the RV. So I was drawing all the air out. Uh, so just real convenient. It had the EBL uh, 1000 in there. The fan plugged right into it, nice and handy. And when I was cutting that out, I wanted any real fine sawdust to be uh, to be drawn out uh, too. So I also have my used my jigsaw. I mean, it's just didn't need an extension cord. It, my power is right down in there. Um, so I cut that hole out, and um, and then when I was all said and done, well, I, there was heavier sawdust, and there was still debris and stuff around. So then I got my shot vac, my five horsepower shot vac. That's that's a powerful shot vac. Um, to, to go ahead and do uh, clean it all out, you know, just shot back the heck out of it again. I'm plugged into that, so the 20 inch box fan, the jigsaw, the uh, uh the, the five horsepower uh, shot back. Uh, it's it's just so convenient. I, I, I really, really, really like it. I guess, lastly, with that EBL thing, the uh, you know, I don't just use it for practical 
you know, tools or cooking things and uh, oh, like my uh, my K cup machine, my coffee machine too. It tells me, okay, it's good to know that you know it only takes six or seven hundred watts to uh, to make a cup of coffee <laughs> for a whole minute or so. Uh, but so not yeah, I don't just use it for just the practical using it for things. I also use it as a tool uh, to help me better understand how much power things are using, so I know uh, maybe where all my all my battery life is going. <laughs> Why are my batteries going down? Well, because I'm, you know, I use some things are more powerful, and for how long do you use them? And you can kind of get a rough figure on on all that stuff. So I use it as a tool as well. Well, let's go back up here for a minute. All right, so I've been buying these uh, these Renergy kits. They're uh, they're 400 watts. Comes with everything you need. Uh, Except for that weather head, that that you uh, gotta find separately. Uh, comes with the panels, the Z brackets, uh, all the mounting screws, and uh, all the hardware. Comes with the cables, comes with the charge controller down inside, and then it comes with the cables that go for the charge controller with the battery. So it's everything you need. Yeah, it's just easy, easy. I could probably piece mill together uh, some other system and save a couple of dollars, but uh, for the price of this system. Uh, it's just hassle free, buy the kit, it's on its way, everything I need. So I've been a real fan of these kits, obviously. I've, I've, bought, I've bought four of them now. One on the bounder, one on the van, two on here. <laughs> so, all right. So what am I gonna do about the refrigerator? All this uh, 800 watts of solar, I should have plenty, right? Well, I know from past years, uh, and, and this is just such a, there's just so many variation or uh, 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 factors at, at play here on on how any one person camps. When you're, if you just camp in the summertime or boondock or, you know, or dry camp, I should say, uh, you're not plugged in somewhere. So if you're dry camping uh, in, in this time of year when the days are still pretty long, they're starting to get shorter for sure. But it's certainly not as short as like January and February, and that's that's when I'm out every year. Well, I'll be out here in a couple of weeks, not sooner, and <laughs> for the entire winter. So I'll be through all those short months. But if you just camp, or I'm sorry, if you just um, uh, dry camp on uh, the nice part of the year through the summer, the days are long, you can get by with much less solar. You can probably get by on two or three or 400 watts, you know, probably pretty easy. But what I run into is when the days get much shorter, you know, when it doesn't get daylight out, our sun comes up over over that way, and you know, it's it's pretty late. It's getting pretty late morning by the time the sun's even decently. Forget about this tree. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna be dry docking here. Okay, be that probably wide open uh, uh, skies of Arizona. Uh, still, it's a little while before the sun gets up high enough. You really really start getting some decent solar. Not until mid morning. Uh, and then late in the evening, well, heck, we all know in the winter time. I mean, by five o'clock, it's dark, so you only get a very, very short amount of solar to begin with. So you know, my 400 watts is probably only. Um, oh, and of course, too, the the sun's not real high in the sky. You know, the sun's way down low in the sky. So you know, when it hits at an angle, it's 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 not bringing in as much power. And the shorter days, so realistically, that 400 watts is be lucky if it's even two and for shorter hours. Okay, you follow me? So that was the reason for adding this is, I know every, you know, it gets to be December, January, February, more, when them days are short, uh, I have gotten by with 500 watts. And oh, I should mention too, the charge controller down in there is capable of one more panel. It's a 40 amp. I could put a fourth panel. Well, I, I am going to put a fifth panel on that charge controller. This is the same kit and it has its own charge controller. I'm gonna squeeze in a fifth panel here as well. So we're gonna go from 800 to 1,000 watts. And again, realistically, when the when the sun's down, it's not gonna be 1,000. I'd be lucky if it's, you know, maybe 700 or even 600, it's gonna be something less. Now I know from the bounder in the, in the last couple of years that with just that fifth panel, that's all I had in the bounder was five of these. I know I come up short with power. 
I know that time of year, as the, the, the sun gets down and the days get shorter, I know that there's a point where I start using a little bit more power than I'm bringing in. Or it's more my energy habits of just the basics of the, the you know, the, the 12 volt lights and the water pump, you know, the basics of the RV, plus my laptop, a little bit, a little bit of TV in the, some evenings and uh, cell phones, you know, devices charged and stuff. You know, my, my habits really don't change much. So it's not that I'm using more power. It's just uh, this time of year, I'm bringing in more power than what I'm using. And there's that point where that's that flops probably in november or getting close to december the days are getting short enough now all of a sudden i'm not bringing in as much power i'm actually using more than i'm bringing in and uh, i start draw you know i start i start um every day my batteries get a little bit lower and a little bit lower and, and that's like well now i got i do have to change my habits a little bit i'll stop using the coffee pot <laughs> and some other adjustments but uh maybe we'll get back to that in a second too so my original whole reason for uh, going from, instead of just adding the, you know, buying the original 400 uh, watt kit and then buying the one extra panel to max it out and is 500 watts, I know in the winter that's not, I come up short. And then I thought, so why just buy one panel and do the same that's that happened in past years? I thought, I'm going to get a whole second kit. Let's just jump from five to eight. So, um, still, with five, I was coming up short. So what's it take just to break even? Do I need, you know, six or seven just to break even? What if I want to use a little bit extra power, like charge an e-bike, and, and, you know, I'm doing other stuff with it, and uh, uh, that's just to break even, just to keep with, uh, bring in as much as I'm using. What if I want to stay ahead of the game a little bit better, or allow for cloudy days? Y you know, so that really it's not that I have a ton of solar really for my you know for my habits full timing in the winter time uh, this is what I need and now all of a sudden I add a residential refrigerator to the mix see see where we're at here <sighs> oh boy so here's my thoughts is I'm gonna go ahead and max these out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna split the systems because uh, both these systems go into the same battery bank. I got I have two batteries down underneath the steps. I've added two more batteries into one compartment. They're hooked together, so it's just one battery bank. I basically have four batteries down there. I think I have a total of uh, 380 amp hours, uh, which I can only use 50% of because they're lead acid batteries. So uh, I'm going to. I think I'm going to cut off the one set of solar panels. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to max them out. I'm going to I'm going to duplicate what I've been doing in the past with the, like with the bounder. I'm going to put that fifth panel on there. And it's on 500 watts. It will charge my uh, my battery bank. I'll have the same thing that I'm used to in past years. I I get by with it. I know how to deal with it. That you know I can make that happen. It's it's not it's not that bad really. Uh, I get by and. Eh. Yeah, so I know the routine and I think I want to dedicate this other system it'll be maxed out too it could be 500 watts I think I'm gonna put a um, I'm gonna make it independent I think I'm gonna put a lithium battery uh, down underneath the one bench seat and I'm going to put I'm gonna disconnect the, those wires from them ba those batteries and I'm gonna run that over that lithium battery I'm gonna make this an independent system to keep that lithium battery happy. 500 watts solely to a lithium battery for the refrigerator. <laughs> That'll get it done. Well, I'd, hang on, let's get back down a minute. Now that I think about it, it's probably the whole idea about putting a residential refrigerator in an RV probably came about, uh, you know, by people that tend to go to uh, campgrounds with plugins and uh or have uh, you know all season long uh sites we're just plugged in all the time you know if you're not out in the road and you're not dry uh dry camping uh you really don't need an rv a propane refrigerator what, uh, you know if you have power all the time if you're just campground to campground with utilities uh why not have a residential refrigerator but it is more of a challenge if you drive if obviously if you dry camp and you don't have power you gotta you gotta have power somehow so uh yeah, a little more, a little more involved doing it going this route. Back to this. 
I'm going to put a lithium battery, and that's what I mentioned about uh, taking that lithium battery out of the van. I take it out for the winter, uh, in the winter time anyway. I'm gone, lithium batteries are, uh, uh, it's going to be stored uh, at, uh, in a climate controlled area. But I, well, actually, I might have a nice lithium battery coming. But uh, before that little arrangement was made, and it's not final yet, uh, I might, instead of storing the, the one out of the van somewhere, I might, I might end up putting it in here, and then run the uh, the uh, wires from the other charge controller. Hang on, let's go back there a minute. Now, uh, you do, do you do you mind if we come back by your uh, in your napping zone? Okay, and, and we come back around here. All right, it's hiding back here in the bedroom. So where them wires go down underneath to those uh, those other batteries, I'm gonna have to run um, disconnect them from the batteries down there, uh, run them under, you know through the RV somehow, and then uh, up to this lithium battery. And now I'm thinking, I'm thinking that lithium battery's gonna be happy a lot. It's gonna be real happy with that much solar. And if I just run the refrigerator off that, I think I'll have the reliability uh i don't have to worry about this and that's the beauty of the rv you know propane the lp refrigerators i would uh that one in the bounder i never never had to worry about it uh it's uh put, you know fill the propane tank up and, and and it was just good for you know and i'd check i'd check the propane level like once a week and eventually I'm like getting down to the quarter, quarter tank. I'm like, all right, we'll have to stop it to get propane tank again. Uh, so you, have, you, know, you have to refill it uh, periodically, but never had to worry about where my battery level was at. Um, you know, we get, uh -oh, we've had cloudy days and short days and we're, we're struggling. We're borderline having enough, uh, enough power. You know, it was, it, it was cloudy. The batteries are down. Do we need to run a generator, you know, this evening? and for a while so that the thing's gonna make it through the, when it comes to my refrigerator I don't want to be juggling and, and uh, worrying about power I, I just want to you know set it and forget it just like it was a uh, LP one so I want overkill on this system I, I want to know that it's getting plenty of power the refrigerator is basically the only thing to be using it, uh, it it'll, the, the battery will always be happy it's it just I that's what I want and after a time after you know it does start to get later in the year and it's uh gets into the shorter days with december and january if it's still producing um just overkill we got just so much power we don't want to do it i mean i might plug a few things into that system it depends how robust that system is and how plentiful the power is and it turns out the tv doesn't use a whole lot of power and i don't watch it for that uh i don't watch it that often so I might say, okay, I'm going to take the TV off the uh, the, the lead acid battery system, and I'm going to plug it into the, into that as well, and maybe uh, a phone charger. And uh, heck, I might flip the. Uh, I have a. Uh, I have a. Uh, a uh, what is it? <laughs> a power strip, coming over here uh, for some things. Now, I might flip it around the other way and plug the power strip into. Of course, I have to get another inverter too, somewhere here mounted. Uh, I've already bought it. It's on the way. So I might have to flip that. I might end up flipping that uh, um, power cord around and going off of this system and running up to my laptop. And so I might, we'll have to wait and see how this performs. As long as I can add a few things to it, I'm pretty sure. But we have to make sure that this is happy and there's, all, there's plenty of power and we have so much excess actually we could be using. I will borrow, I will run some things off of it that will free up that will free up this system of some power and before when that 500 watts up there wasn't quite cutting it and we were coming up short uh, a little bit every day in, in the short days if I take some devices off of it maybe 500 will be enough Phew. wow did I did we, did we make it through all that uh, and one of the things I've done in the past was, yeah, I like just I just like using my little coffee machine. And what I do in the winter time is I get I say, well, I might I might make my first cup with that, uh, but I, I use this and uh, you unscrew the bottom, you put a you put a pod coffee pod in it, and you screw it back on, and you take this top off, and you uh, it's a plunger.
okay and you take the top off uh, you know put enough hot water in it you know heat water on the stove put hot water in it then uh, you simply I get my dirty coffee cup here so with a pot in there it sits on there you have the hot water in there put that back on carefully and you push the water through there and it usually takes okay there was went some of it yeah you know, usually about three or four times all the water is going to that cup and uh, this by the way is a my joe it's a presto my joe like i got this uh from walmart this is really nice i really really like it but that's one of the one example of how you know i still get by it's not that big of a deal and i i changed my power usage habits i i i back off on using this and that's you know that's what i do all right I just seen a delivery truck uh, come down the road and out that way up into that little uh, that little neighborhood up there and I know he's gonna be coming back and dropping a couple things off yeah I've already ordered some things the uh, the inverter won't be in for a couple of days the the uh, I on Amazon what did I order I don't know I had to get another two to one thing to put that fifth panel in that one at two sets so put the fifth panel the panels won't be here i don't think till saturday so uh oh that's almost here so, <laughs> uh you know it's some other things so uh that's it i gotta put this together i, I just don't want to be struggling i don't want to have to be worrying about my food this winter and um uh, i just want it better than that that's where we're at we'll be back I, this stuff's gonna be showing up we're gonna get this together Sheesh. all right we'll be back soon See ya. See ya. Fella, you know we need to make a new outro for our videos. And the old one with the bounder going down the road in Utah, near Salt Lake City. That's where we took that at. What are we going to do? Now we need to get the coachman going down the road. Maybe we just need to, maybe we just need you. What? How about you for an outro? Huh? <laughs> How about you for an outro? That'll be it done, right? Right? You can, what are you doing? What's down there? Them bad rabbits? Are there bad rabbits down there? But those bad deers. Yeah, the bad deers are usually over that way. She knows. The deer are usually down there. Late in the evening, and the rabbits are usually down here. Sometimes the rabbits are down in the middle. Hmm? Better bet. Where's, where's that? Where are they? Where's some bad rabbits? What? Where's some bad rabbits? Some bad deers. Go get them. Go get those bad deers. Go get those bad deers. Get them. Go get them. All right.